what? I'm gonna lure it back here. You're gonna use yourself as bait? Are you insane? I'm used to this guy. I know how to handle him. Afraid of a little thunder. Time for this now. The escape craft is just up ahead. Come on, Snake. We made it. We made it. Over there. It's the boss, isn't it? I'll go get the wig ready to take off. Right. I'll leave you two alone, but come back in one piece, okay? Promise me!
life's end. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. When life ends, it gives off a final lingering aroma. Light is but a farewell gift from the darkness to those on their way to die. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss. Why are you doing this? Why? To make the world one again. The world used to be whole. But with the end of the Second World War, the philosophers began to fight amongst themselves, and the world was torn apart. The Cobras, my comrades, who trained and fought alongside me, were torn apart as well. The foibles of politics and the march of time can turn friends into enemies just as easily as the wind changes. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yesterday's ally becomes today's opposition. And this Cold War? Think back. When I was leading the Cobras, America and Russia were fighting together. Now, consider whether America and Russia will still be enemies in the 21st century. Somehow, I doubt it. Enemies change along with the times, the flow of the ages, and we soldiers are forced to play along. I didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today, just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. So then what is an enemy? Is there such a thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the Cobras. They are my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. You see, I am the last remaining child of the philosophers. But after he revealed the truth, my father was killed by that same shapeless, formless organization. And my father isn't the only thing the philosophers have taken from me. In June of 1944, the Cobras and I took part in the landing at Normandy. We'd been given a top-secret mission to locate and destroy enemy V-2 rocket installations. I was pregnant at the time. The sorrow was the father. I gave birth on the field of battle. A beautiful baby boy. But my child was snatched away from me by the philosophers. Look at this scar. This is proof that I was once a mother. I gave up my body and my child for my country. There is nothing left inside me now. Nothing at all. No hatred, not even regret. And yet sometimes at night, I can still feel the pain creeping up inside me, slithering through my body like a snake. I've never talked this much about myself before. Thanks. Thanks for listening to me. I feel content. Snake. Commence the operation. I raised you. 
I loved you. I've given you weapons, taught you techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life, by your own hand. One must die, and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. I'll give you ten minutes. In ten minutes, MiGs will come and bomb the hell out of this place. If you can beat me in less than ten minutes, you'll be able to escape in time. Let's make this the greatest ten minutes of our lives, Jack. Boss? You're a soldier. Finish your mission. Prove your loyalty. Face me. Get ready! There's only room for one boss and one snake. 